to help us do better with each other and to remind us to share our abundance with those that are less fortunate than, than we are. We ask finally, Father, that you show us all of your graces and we all look forward to the day where perhaps we can gain kind admittance into your kingdom. In your great name we pray, amen. amen. And if I may read in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. I know Brooke Lee just put on time. I would like for everybody to check their mic to make certain we have a home. Thank you very much. Um, we will now ask Ms. Gaines to call the Lord's Commission. I am Matthew James, President and Clerk of the Board of Commissioners of Bullock County, hereby call the roll of those on the governing body. All those present to answer by saying aye. Chairman Roy Thompson. Aye. Commissioner Ray Mosley. Aye. Commissioner Anthony Simmons. Aye. Commissioner Kurt Hill. Aye. Commissioner Tim Russian. Aye. Commissioner Walter Gibson. Aye. I have determined that we have six members of the Board of Commissioners present. Therefore, we have a quorum to conduct business for the good of the citizens of Bullock County. I now need a full attention. Thank you, Ms. Um, we now have our zoning agenda. Um, so we need a motion to approve the zoning agenda so we can get started. Second. Second. Motion and second. No discussion. All those in favor, show of hands. Unanimous approval. Mr. Newman, you went all right. right. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, we got one item tonight. Joy Sawyer submitted an application for conditional use to allow for an electric power generation facility. The property is located off Hendricks, but, uh, Hendricks Deluxe Road. Um, Mr. Charles Woosley and his partner, and Nick Sam Solar, were supposed to be here, but unfortunately they were behind schedule, so they may not be here in time. Planning has only made a recommendation to approve by unanimous vote. So you can see on the slide, this is the property that's in question. The biggest piece is what they're looking for now. And they're not doing all of it, they're just doing partial of it. This is the sign located on 80. This is Highway 80 towards Portal, across the road from 80. And this is going back towards 25. And you see right now, the property is pretty well just uh, woods. And this is looking across the road at Miss Joy's house. And this is the actual location of where the, the entrance would be to the cell the farm. And part of the solar farm is going to be in uh, this field. And you can see already they do have two solar farms in the vicinity that Miss Joy had approved for. And this is just a, a third one that they're going to do. This is going to be probably a bigger one because it's 25 acres, where the other two were five acres. Uh, and as you can see, we did have seven conditions applied to this, and they were all, you know, okay with all the conditions. So, I guess, Mr. Chairman, I'll just ask, since they couldn't make it, that uh, you go ahead and have this hearing tonight, because B and Z recommended it by unanimous vote. Okay. And uh, is it okay with everybody to go ahead and proceed? Yes, sir. I guess if you got questions, I guess it's to me. All right. I just, well, I'll just make a comment. All they're adding on is to the back of the existing ones that we've already approved. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. And Mr. Chairman, too, you notice the green line around it. They actually are planning on doing more landscaping than we would have normally required. Right. And since they agreed to do that, we're going to go ahead and make that part of the condition. Okay. Do we have any questions or comments? No, no, that's for motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we accept this conditional use. Second. We have a motion. With condition? With condition, yes. We have a motion and a second, and we'll discussion. All those in favor, show of hands. 
unanimous approval. Thank you very much. And I appreciate your presenting, going ahead and presenting that tonight. Um, before I entertain a motion to approve the general agenda, do we have any other discussion or modifications desired by the county manager or the board? Will the chairman yield the floor to the county manager, please? Yes, sir. Thank you and good evening, everybody. Um, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to provide the invitation and the pledge. Uh, I'm asking that we uh, add two items to new business. And uh, contrary to uh, Commissioner Rushing's suspicions, I promise I'll be short, but uh, even though I'm presenting. But uh, one is uh, we, we'd like to ask approval for a resolution uh, for a grant that we're applying for for the fire department. And the second item being, I think I'm asking for uh, special privilege or, or permission with, with regard uh, to the uh, purchasing policy, policies that we have in order to procure some additional fire equipment that I'd like to explain um, at that time. So uh, the, the grant resolution, I think, or I uh, perceive you'll have to uh, actually take action on. The second item may only require consent, but you can act on it if you wish. And I'll yield the floor back to the chairman because I believe you may have to have a third item that you wanted to add unless I'm mistaken. Uh, I, for uh, the good of citizens, not a public necessity, I'm asking for the uh, two items to be added as, as I requested. All right. Anyone else have anything they need to add? I have one I would like to add. I've had three volunteers to step forward to serve on the Public Facilities Authority. And uh, I would like to go ahead and act on that tonight. So I'm going to add that under new business item number four. And I, no more. I would like to um, ask for a motion to approve the general agenda. All right, we have a motion, we have a second. <laughs> no further discussion. I need to um, ask for a show of hands. All those approved the motion. Uh, unanimous approval. Thank you very much. Do we have anyone to speak under public comment tonight? We had a young lady to sign up, Miss Cindy Smith, but uh, I don't suppose that she's in the hall out there? Yeah. Okay. Then we will move on to the consent agenda. We have four items on the consent agenda, and we can pull any of these out and put them under new business, or we can vote on them collectively. And, um, Whatever your wishes will be. I think we all routine, so I think yes, we just go on like they are. We must suggest them. Okay. I make that motion to approve the consent. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda. We have a second. Second. And a second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all of those in favor of the motion, show of hands. Unanimous approval. We're going to move right along into new business, and we will have a um, item number one is honorary road naming, and it's <clears throat> we're going to honor one of our own tonight, and um, it's Mr. Gordon Austin, and I asked the family. I've got a process I want to go through, and then we'll ask a couple of others to make a comment or two. Can y'all hear me okay with this mask on? Okay. Um, 
just for some information because I served, I was on planning and zoning uh, in Mr. Austin's last two years, I believe. But uh, this is some family information. Bullock County, Georgia Commissioner, George Gordon Austin, 1937-2004, was a native of Littleton, North Carolina. He lived in Bullock County for over 40 years and served God, his family, and this community with love and dedication. He graduated with honors from North Carolina A&T University, first lieutenant in the U.S. Army, administrator of Georgia Southern University for 28 years, he was a Georgia licensed and practicing general director in Statesboro for 35 years. He was elected to the Bullock County Board of Commissioners from 1979 until his death in 2004. And that's 25 years, 24 to 25 years as a commissioner. Commissioner Austin was most proud of his contributions to the planning and development of Mill Creek Park, and it progressed as it progressed into the successful theme park it is today. He also enjoyed working with the Sheriff's Department and its buildings of then new Highway 301 North Complex along with his dear friend and facility namesake, Sheriff Arnold Ray Aikens. He really enjoyed the traveling great mills the County Commissioners of Georgia experience representing us at all those long and boring district and state conferences. Though not a person who sought recognition, Commissioner Austin would be extremely proud and grateful for this warm and thoughtful gesture from Bullock County today. And this gesture mentioned is to give an honorary name to the road going into Mill Creek Park. It will have a sign on it and it will say Austin Boulevard. And having said that, I'm gonna ask Commissioner Simmons, if he will, to make comments if he would like. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I've known knew Mr. Austin before he became a commissioner. We lived kind of right across the road from each other. He fed us kids hot dogs. Um, when I became a commissioner, he took me on his wing and he taught me about county business. Um, we traveled up and down the road together. I had many conversations. <clears throat> we took turns driving to those board meetings. Um, but one, one stands out, well many stand out, we, it was my turn to drive and I had a 1992 um, Ford Ranger, you know how small they are. <laughs> so me and him stuffed ourselves in that Ranger and you couldn't tell us apart because we just took up the whole cab. <laughs> so, and we didn't have, it wasn't covered in the back, so we had our clothes in the back. About halfway there, it started pouring down rain. So we stopped and bought some trash bags and put our clothes in. So when we got to this four-star um, motel, which was the Marriott Marquis, imagine how the bellhop looked. We drove up in that rain and our clothes and trash bags. <laughs> they didn't know how to grab them. <laughs> but we, we had a lot of good times. One thing about Gordon, he never got angry where I could see it. I mean, he was always even killed. He never, I mean, I would be mad. And he wouldn't. And I couldn't understand it, but he was always a, a good teacher and a, a good commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Simmons. Mm -hmm. I would like to now, and Sydney, you don't have to, but if you would like to say a few words about your dad to step up to the podium and do uh -huh. so. And that beautiful young lady with you there, she'd like to step up there with you. This is my husband, like this is Tiny. She'll be okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I didn't compare anything, you know, other than what we talked about. We said it was about to be brief. 
Um, it's been many years that from that it passes since 2004. Many of you were here, or it was just, you know, uh, just before many of you did come here. And so y'all know, you know, what kind of person he was. Uh, when he passed away, the county did, uh, did some, some wonderful things for us. I believe there was a resolution that the, the state of Georgia did on behalf of my father. They gave us a beautiful uh, portrait, and it was really a large portrait, and, and we still have it. We have it in another room today. And we think about that all the time. It has meant a lot for us and done a lot for us. So this is, this is very special. And you know, I had been asked over the years, why, you know, why people in the community, a lot of people do remember, many of them are going on now. A lot of people remember him and they ask, you know, what, did the county ever want to roll back him and all that? Wasn't he the first type of the commissioner? Wasn't he the same? Man, man, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that was just the type of person he was. He just didn't seek uh, recognition. And he always taught me that way. And I mean, you know, I, I rarely would tell people, that's mom and dad, he was rich for this and that, because he just didn't operate that way. And I don't like operating that way. So we never mentioned it. But I got sick um, a few years back. And, and in that process, you know, we get a chance to reflect on a lot of things in our lives and what we did and what we can do um, going forward. And I thought that maybe I should at least reach out and, and see if there was something that the county would like to do. So I could always have that question answered in my mind. So I approached uh, Commissioner uh, um, Thompson, Chairman Thompson, about it, and, um, he, and, and he was very receptive of that and understanding. And it took a while to work on it, um, you know, just getting roads named that folks or anything, actually. It's just not an overnight process. You know, he has to go through something like this and much, much more behind the scenes, I'm sure. But, but, but it's done, and, and I thank you so much, Commissioner Thompson, and all of the board commissioners and everyone else that was involved um, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Commissioner Roy, I'd like to say something. Me and Mr. Sidney talked about it before. My daddy and Mr. Roy were good friends. In fact, 1980, a lot of people don't know it, but when Registry got incorporated to the city, and Mr. Roy was a Go to man for my daddy. He was the first mayor in the school to go. He knew the ropes and Jack Hill and Joe Kennedy and all of them got ready for a long time. Well, was going down and we were kind of awarded the well with this was back in the 50s and um, Joe Kennedy and Jack Hill said that if you get it incorporated back to the city, you can get a grant to get the well fixed. And his daddy was a big part of that. I just wanted to tell you that his family. How much we appreciate it. I feel that night that same way. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'd like to just say a word too. Um, I'd like to thank uh, 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 I'm thankful for so many people, but I'm, I'm thankful to have known Mr. Uh, Gordon uh, and to have had the opportunity to serve in his capacity. I perhaps wouldn't be involved in politics or get to serve the community if it had not been there. Uh, and, and just to uh, add a little bit of history, I don't know him as, as uh, long as Mr. Simmons, but I got to know uh, Mr. Austin with my late uh, pastor, J.J. Grant. They were often eat lunch at Ella's Honor. And uh, they would invite me to come along, so that's how I got to know him. And uh, saw them talk about uh, things of the community and what needed to be done. And it piqued my interest uh, to want to be a part of the community and, and do something positive in the community. So I'm honored, I was honored to uh, serve in that capacity to, to uh, complete uh, Commissioner Austin's term and uh, I will always be indebted. And uh, to Cindy, I will always be indebted to you. Uh, it made its pen as a remembrance that uh, I can work proudly, and I say thank you um, for for that opportunity. So again, thank you. Anyone else? You know, I might add one thing. Loretta Moore, a lot of y'all knew her and did not know her, but the ones that didn't know her, I've always said she had the prettiest smile of any lady that I have ever met. And it reminds me of Gordon. Um, 
You didn't catch him a lot of times without a smile on his face either, regardless of how, what situation got into you. So uh, let's make this official and vote on it. Um, and then I want to give the Austin family a round of applause from us and everybody there um, for their day. So um, if I can, I'll entertain a motion. To, to name this ready. Second. So a motion second. Any more discussion? All of those in favor of renaming the road to Austin Boulevard, show of hands. Unanimous approval. Now, we'd like to give y'all a I, uh, although I've had the privilege of meeting Gordon Austin some years ago, uh, on one hand, I regret that he wasn't present when I was hired back in 2004 because he had just passed away, but it's also been a special privilege to work with Commissioner Mosley, briefly at first, then Commissioner Jackson and Commissioner Mosley again. I do remember one time at ACCD, those long, boring conferences, a commissioner in Coffee County who was also a funeral director, George McIver, was uh, equally as big as Mr. Gordon was, both very tall, and uh, it was Mr. McIver who introduced me, and I decided I would let them be my bodyguards all night long. But uh, the thing I remember about Mr. Austin, as short as the interlude was, he seemed every bit of a gentleman, and uh, Sydney's the same way. So I'm very gratified and proud that you all did that. Okay, on to this business. Uh, what we're trying to do with this particular item, um, it's, it's a mere formality, and it's consistent with our <clears throat> strategic fire plan and so forth, but uh, I should have put, had this one on last week, but it was an afterthought. You know, we have so much to do around here, I get giddy with excitement and I forget. But um, <clears throat> we haven't set the amount of the grant uh, application yet. They're due, I think, later next week or at the end of next week. So we're trying to get the numbers down for the number of breathing apparatus units that we need. But you'll notice in that resolution draft that we sort of put a cap, which we used for last year's grant of 904000 with a $90,000 uh, 10% match, and those are very rough numbers. But um, even though we don't have to file this resolution uh, technically with grant application, we do need to keep it on file because there is a provision through FEMA that when you apply for these grants that the government authority authorizes it, but it's also consistent with our grants management policies embedded with our financial policies. So what I'm asking for is to, uh, for you to authorize this or approve this resolution for us to file this grant application, although we think we may end up asking for possibly 500000 or less. But uh, the way it's written ought to suffice for FEMA if uh, we were fortunate enough to get any kind of an award. So we're, uh, we're, that's the action that we're asking for on this grant application. Any questions? If not, I'm going to ask for a motion to. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to make sure that we approve the grant application. Second. Motion second, more discussion. 
So again, the idea of doing this and allowing us this flexibility to either purchase under sole source cooperative agreement, or even if you wanted to classify it as an emergency purchase, which you could make something of an argument of that. But nonetheless, no matter which purchasing method that, that you use, what I'm really doing is asking for pre-approval. And you know, once we get prices and delivery times and things like that, you know, even if we could get them maybe as early as the next meeting, although, although subsequently it might be in, in the first meeting in March, you know, we, we would report back to you formally and informally what we're doing. But we're seeking this pre-approval to use a combination of these three purchasing me methods along our policies so that we can expedite what we need to do. Because if we bought everything or if we picked other vendors, you know, there are some vendors who can already have tankers on these trucks or can put them together, but not as fast as this place in Florida. You know, it could take a year. And the way they did this, and I, I refer to it as the Coffee County model, I'm not 100% sure how much the new chassis would cost, but they bought used chassis, and any used equipment that's credible or worthwhile is hard to find. Or if it is, if we are able to find it, we don't want to drive to Oregon and get something that's 12 years old and has 150,000 miles on it. So I'm speculating that the uh, tanker shuttles could come in in a maybe a 130 to 160 range just to be safe. The fire engine and the additional equipment is probably going to come in at um, probably. I'd have to look at Chris's revised numbers if he had the hoses and everything else. Probably about 450, but it's a competitive price through the North Carolina Sheriff's Association. But all in all, you know, it's probably going to cost us something south of two million, but that's much lower than the two and a half million or so that I estimated in an issues briefing um, two or three weeks ago. And then I think we, we need to sit with Andy and Finance and determine if we need to do perhaps some form of lease purchasing because if we're going to use, whether we use FOSS funds or avail, available fund balance in the fire fund, you know, we don't want to starve the bank account out because we have other needs that, um, that we have to pay for, and particularly if we were to pay anything out of the fire fund that comes in, the primary funding source is the property tax, which comes in once a year. So we've got to do a little cash flow planning. Bottom line is this, we're asking for your pre-approval uh, pre to use these purchasing methods and acquire uh, lease purchase financing if necessary, so we can shave that time down and get this equipment in here that we're going to need to, use, to utilize with the alternative water sources. And I think in the issues briefing, briefing you know, we want that measles map to grow, is, is the metaphor that I use. So, took a little time to spill this all out, but I wanted to make sure everybody understood it, regardless if you had read the email or not. But do you, do you have any questions or, or thoughts? Um, I don't have any questions, and I think with the email it explained it, and tonight you reassured us what was in the email. And uh, there's another old Southern expression, you might not have heard this one, we keep this can far enough. Yeah. I'm going to ask for, a, I'm going to ask for approval, pre-approval, or a motion to proceed uh, in looking into the fire equipment that we need. Uh, if somebody would put that in the Mr. Chairman, I move that we would move forward with uh, putting in motion uh, in the fire equipment that the Fuller County School definitely needs. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, then show of hands. Approve of the motion. All right. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. We're not going to kick the, the can down the road anymore. We're going to stump a muddle on it. 
Just whatever you got to do to get it, get it moving. I've, I've got something here, and then we're going to we'll move into comments, and then I've got one other little item, and then we will be adjourning you soon. Um, item number four, I would like to make um, the two-year appointments to the public facilities authority that we um, or present my idea or my selection of for the public facilities authority and I'm going to utilize what I think is probably the fairest way there was three commissioners volunteered so that's who I'm going to nominate as far as serving the first two years and those three commissioners, he's not here, but it's Commissioner Jackie Stringer, Commissioner Anthony, S Anthony Simmons, and Commissioner Kimmy Rushing. And uh, if that's agreeable with everybody, I would like for someone to put that in the form of a vote on it. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I move that uh, Mr. Anthony Simmons, Mr. Jackie Stringer, and uh, Mr. Rushing, I'll be appointed to Mr. May. Okay, thank you. Do we have a second? Second. I have a motion. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor of the motion to obtain. Uh, unanimous approval. Congratulations, fellas. Uh, that's also a non paying form. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, might say too, we'll have a brief organizational meeting at some point in the near future to adopt some bylaws, elect officers, and that sort of thing. Okay. And adopt a single. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to move in now to any staff comments. I'm going to call Doug up to the podium because. He was sharing with me today that a DMS fire station department caught on fire and lost everything. I think all the ambulances and yeah. all the fire trucks and um, but the reason I wanted him to come is he overheard him make a comment. We need at our DMS and fire station. So I'd like to explain it to us what we need. Okay, I think everybody, I'm, I'm Doug Riggers, and the social director. Uh, in Jeff Davis County, the um, it's reported that an explosion followed by a fire, destroying all three ambulances and fire trucks. It also will house uh, the 911 center and the EMA office. Our department is much like this. We have six ambulances in one station. So if we had an event like this, we would lose everybody essentially other than what's in Brooklyn. Um, we don't have a fire alarm system. We've looked at it before. It was cost prohibited at the time. Uh, I spoke with uh, PMAC today, and they're suggesting one of us of $5,000. That's a lot of money. I understand that. But losing millions of dollars in supplies and vehicles is very expensive too. What we'd like to do is maybe get a combination system, fire system, and security system. Because everybody knows we have we house drugs. We have never had a problem. We don't want to have a problem. Uh, I know this will take time, but I'd like you just to consider a top of the line system that we can build on for security. Um, as far as the uh, other fire stations, certainly they need also. Many times our, our stations unhoused, unmanned, because all the trucks are out. After five, this happens a lot. Even though we're next door to the fire department, unless they're alerted, we could have total loss. Any more comments or questions on that? What I would like to do, since I overheard the comment and was talking to you about it, and we need a little time, but what, what we need out of you is some, I 
just proxy. Sure. And then we can bring that up at another meeting. Okay. Um, and you hit the nail on the head. Five thousand dollars. That that's I know what that was for. That was just one bar lot in one building. Right. But that's a heck of a lot cheaper than millions of dollars in loss of the equipment. Yes. And uh, so I'm not. Of course, the county manager has stepped out and not going to put any, not going to put much pressure on. Them, but um, we will address. We will address this issue. <laughs> We quickly address that we're in the process right now of putting together this, the capital improvement plan which is due on friday so i would assume that's going to be yes, in, in that and so we will budget for it and he puts it in that plan and we'll bring that before you okay so it's part of the budget process see how easy okay. Okay. can i have a minute mark my cousin yes sir unless you're going to give it to somebody i want you to walk outside yeah, so this would be very brief i wanted to share with you we transported 246 covid patients uh, we're doing the COVID Anderson test now. It takes 15 minutes, and all county employees, when we expand the county families members, such as, you know, if a family member has it, you're going to be out of work, you need to know. We need to know. Uh, it's private. We don't share it with anyone other than the state. The state will call you, and they'll be tracing. Um, it's no cost, and, um, uh, glad to do it. We're currently on the fourth generation of decontamination equipment. The first two stages, one and two, damaged a lot of our equipment. That was just part of it. It was a learning process. Now we're in one that's very safe. Um, I don't know if we can get reimbursed for that for FEMA, but we'll start to work on that. We just received a new truck. Um, it's licensed. It's on the road. We reached out to uh, uh, Jeff Davis County and asked them if they could utilize our old truck and we just retired. Unfortunately, other services just stepped to the plate before we did. They, it wasn't necessary. Uh, we're fixing a request of uh, proposals to put us a new panelist that will be tomorrow. They'll have three, three weeks to respond. Delivery won't be until next fiscal year. Uh, there will be an increase in the price due to the rising cost of metal and the new chassis model. That's basically everything's going on down with you. Well, hopefully we can accommodate you also. Um, I know. Right, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> um, right. <laughs> and, and one more thing, uh, for the weekend for the Super Bowl, you know, it would be great if everybody would wear a mask all the time, but we have a lot of resistance, you know, as, as far as that. And, um, and I'll say this, I know we're live streaming. If you don't actually help me enough to wear a mask, please wear one. If you just don't want to wear one because you don't like them, please wear one. And uh, because it could save your life or somebody else's life. And to go along with that is the social distancing and washing your hands. And, uh, you know, and, and I think we've all said that and said it and said it and said it and said it. That um, I just wish people would, more people would, would heed the advice because I think that would really curtail the COVID the increase that we're having. So, just commissioners, do y'all have any comments about anything? Mr. Chairman, I did ask to take the step up and just give up. Okay. Just a minute on the general team so everybody, okay. the commissioners will know that so they can. I'd like to go. That's what I'm doing. All right. They got me going. He gone. Yeah. Good evening. Um, I just told him I had mentioned you, but just give him a rundown on the judge truck. Uh, we've got time and whatever. I've been so busy, but 
here for the dirt roads and everybody's all around up in culverts. We've been fighting that for a long time, but it's getting close. I'm going to let you tell them. Okay. Um, the last information we had from the supplier um, was this, somewhere before the second week in March, which leads us about six weeks. Uh, we have, um, we've been in discussions about how to have the labor in place before that time gets here. I think we worked out a solution, at least in the short term, and uh, we'll be proceeding forward with that. It'll take a couple of weeks of advertisement, and, uh, and then the interview process and orientation and um, get them actually to work. So I'm projecting that could take a month or maybe a little more. So we should be about on time with that. Um, we do have uh, some interest at least for part of the operation and uh, we'll be, uh, as that application comes in, we'll be following up on that and see where that leads us. So, does that answer you? Yeah, that's good. That's good. I just want to let them know that the other machine hit and we just back to back. Any, uh, any other questions? Anybody, anybody have a question? Thank you for the report again. Thank you. Anything else from the commission? If not, I appreciate all of y'all coming. I do have one question. How many of y'all live on the dirt road? Okay. This is not for a lengthy discussion, but are they perfect? I would like to see the perfect dirt road in Bullock County. I don't believe there is one. But uh, we have a lot of imperfect dirt roads, but Transportation Department, I appreciate, we appreciate y'all's efforts and everything that y'all are doing because a two inch rain will wash out a whole week or two weeks worth of work and or three weeks or four weeks, then you have to start all over. And we're getting our share of rain right now and complaints but i appreciate y'all every time we get a complaint you try to take care of it but with 753 and one third miles of dirt roads it's hard to be everywhere at once with, with the workforce that we have so uh, but i thank y'all for trying as hard as hard as you can and if there's nothing else then uh do we have a motion to adjourn Second. Motion is second. All those in favor?